Good day everyone, uh, it's evening time here in Sydney and I thought I'd give you a quick run through of the WASP here. I've got it rigged up um, and I figured I'd do a little video just to show people who maybe aren't familiar with the boat uh, what it lo looks like, run through a few systems. Uh, if you already own a boat you might find some useful stuff here as well but um, just some pretty basic explanations for this evening. Uh, you'll have to excuse my shadow. Hi there. Uh, evening time here and the sun's getting low but I figured I'd just roll through it anyway. Um, so uh, the first thing that you'll probably notice and most people have noticed uh, is this wishbone rig that the boat's set up with. It's actually quite effective although uh, a little unconventional I guess. It looks like a windsurfer rig but um, it is different because you're never going to grab on to the wishbone here. Um, it all runs off a main sheet system and we've got downhaul and outhaul out on the end which I'll show in a minute as well. Um, I've got everything cranked on here actually with our outhaul super tight um, and the downhaul really tight as well because I wanted to actually demonstrate how flat you can make the sail um, and how much bend there is in the mast when you get it all really cranked on. It's actually a very effective setup. You can really change the amount of power in the boat dramatically uh, which lets you get foiling in earlier in lighter conditions and also uh, will help you depower when it gets windy. Because going upwind uh, with a bit of speed when it's over 20 knots, the apparent wind strength is pretty strong. So we need to be able to depower really effectively. So you can see our outhaul comes to the end here and a really simple main sheet system that just runs back up through the bottom of the sail and back to the front there. Apologies about that glare. So the rig's really efficient and really quite simple. The added benefit, which was one of their main design criteria, was not having a boom to clobber your head on. Um, which is really nice and also you'll notice that there's no side stays. Fully unstayed rig drops in just like a laser into the hull here um, which means that we need this wide diameter in the mast but it also means that when you can't wheel downwind you just slide off the front of the wings and hit the water rather than collecting side stays on the way through like a moth which I'm quite excited about. Pretty happy to not be running into side stays. So the other big thing that people notice is obviously that the boat flies lifting up out of the water. People also notice pretty much straight away this wand system. So let's have a look at how this works. We actually have this wand here, which when the boat's in the water will be pushed back by the water pressure up to hull level like this. As the boat lifts off and the paddle at the end of this stays at water level, it will swing forward. Now why this is significant, if I pop this off, is that we can see it actually connects all the way back through the hull. We have our gearing screw here which pivots and pulls this plate which is connected through the middle of the boat onto this reversing lever in here. If I get that in focus, if I move that you'll see it going. It runs back through the middle of the boat and onto this pin here at the top of the foil. This moves that pin backwards and forwards, which controls a pull rod, or a push rod rather, down through the foil and onto the flap. And the end result is, hopefully you can see it here in this shot, is that as the wand moves, the flap moves also. And what we're actually doing is creating a greater angle, uh, a greater depth on the foil shape of the actual foil. Rather than being like ailerons on a plane, you'll notice that as we want to lift, the flap gets pushed down. Uh, and what that does is it creates more lift off the foil shape, but also more drag. And as we get higher, it reduces the lift and also reduces the drag so that we sit up out of the water and hopefully accelerate really quickly. And with that mechanism, with the wand running right down to the flap at the back here, it's able to pretty much fly itself once you get the balance and the trim right. The boat will just take off with a bit of boat speed. And it's a really, really nice sensation when you get it up and running. So let's go and have a quick look at our foil section at the back because we don't have a flap on the rudder and it's not automatically controlling ride height. This is fixed even though it looks a little bit like it's the same. It's of course it's off the same alloy section but it is locked in. Now what we can actually do here is change the angle of attack of the entire rudder by using our tiller extension here. And if you watch this universal joint, you'll see that you can spin the whole unit, which runs another rod down through the middle of the tiller. 
and actually slides the entire unit forwards and backwards on the gudgeons. Hopefully you can see that here. You'll note my three little white stripes there and you'll see that pin moving back on the rudder case at the moment and as I wind back it goes forward again. And this is actually changing the angle of attack of the entire foil at the back. Now what this does is actually control our pitch, whether we're bow down, bow up, whether we've got enough lift to take off, and also we need to wind it back down to reduce lift so that we don't break the surface with the rudder foil as we're going through the water at speed. So normally this will get changed a bit as you're going upwind. Certainly you'll need to wind some lift off as you bear away at the top mark and the boat speed obviously goes up. Um, just to reduce the amount of lift and keep the boat flying nice and straight. So that's a pretty basic run through. I'll put up some more videos with a little bit more technical advice and information in the future. But if you've got any questions, don't be afraid to throw them in the comments section and I'll try and answer them as best as I can. See ya!